Hello everyone, welcome to the next video of material science. Here we will discuss another mechanical property which is ductility. Now what is ductility? As we see from the definition, the amount of plastic deformation that has been sustained at fracture. Now we have seen the experiment that in soil testing experiment, right? What we do? We apply force to the specimen and the, uh, the specimen elongates. Now from that we have drawn the stress strength curve. And you already know we have discussed this in the previous video, the stress strain curve. What happened? We have the elastic deformation and then we see the plastic deformation. Let me just draw the stress strain curve, how it looked. We have stress here and strain here. We have this elastic region and then we have the plastic region. This is for the ductile material. And if we see for the brittle material, it will just go here and then it break. This is brittle material. Now what happened? The amount of plastic deformation is in this curve in the ductile material. We have the elastic deformation and we have the plastic deformation from here to here. This is elastic deformation and from here to here till fracture this total from this all from here. This is elastic uh, plastic deformation. So the amount of plastic deformation that has been sustained at a fracture. So from the proportional limit till fracture point whatever deformation occur in the material is known as ductility. Now look how we will see it like physically. If we have this specimen what we do? This specimen we deform it. If the deformation is elastic we will extend its length but if we release the force then it will go back to its original position. That is elastic deformation. But if I apply the force to the specimen and it goes till here and if I release the force the specimen will not come back to its original position. right? So means there is a permanent deformation which is the plastic deformation. Now that type of plastic deformation from the proportional limit to the fracture point whatever is sustained at the material is known as ductility of the material. How we can measure the ductility of the material? Now look here this type of deformation how it is either it is increase in the length of the specimen right if the, this is the, 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 the specimen look we have the tensile specimen right. Let us say here we have the tensile specimen. Now what happen if I apply force from here? and here it will elongate right it will elongate first the elastic and then the plastic so the new length could be like it might goes up here like this and goes down here like this and the new specimen could be like this now the the the, the red one is the original one and the black one is the new specimen but in the new specimen what happened? The length increases, right? Previously the length from here to here it was the original length, right? L naught. And now the original length is the, 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 the length after the uh, applying the force, after the deformation this is L uh, F, let us say. So the length has increased, right? Now how much plastic deformation is there? Means what is the permanent deformation in this specimen? We can measure that one as a percent elongation in this specimen. So percent elongation with ductility we can measure as a percent elongation, right? How we measure that one? We have percent elongation this specimen. How much the length has been increased? And we can calculate that one. The, 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 the final length minus the original length divided by the original length multiplied by 100. This will give us the percent elongation in this specimen. Now from the tensile test what you have done? You have performed the test but if you want to find the ductility you must have the original length of the specimen then perform the test and after the test the specimen of course it will break because it is destructive testing right. But at the end what you can do? You bring the two specimen let us say it will be like this. This is we have the nicking in the specimen and it breaks here at this point. This is let us suppose the left side 
and we have the right side here. So, here is the fracture point. Now, what we do? You bring the two specimen and keep it like this, right? And then measure the length. So, it will give you the final length of the specimen. Now, if we find the percent elongation, how much elongation from original to final is there, that will give us the ductility as percent elongation. So, we can find the ductility as percent elongation. But there is another thing which is happening. That another thing is what? If you look here, the area, the cross sectional area, the original area is more. But when we apply the force, when there is plastic deformation, then the area reduces from here to here. And this is the new cross sectional area. So, the cross sectional area reduces. We can also find ductility as percent reduction in area. Now, look here, this is somehow we can say this is the original, but at this point where the fracture occur, the area is very, very less and it has been reduced. There was reduction in the area. So, we can also find ductility as percent reduction in the area, percent reduction in area and that reduction percentage how we can find? We find the original area minus the area at fracture divided by the original area times 100 to give us percentage. So, here this one also you can find from the tensile testing. How? You take the specimen, measure the cross sectional area before the test and then perform the test after the test bang and see at fracture what is the area. Let us suppose this is fracture point, then measure the area which will give you the, the area at a fracture point. So, you can find percent reduction in the area. Uh, which will give you the ductility as percent reduction of area. Now, for the brittle material, look here. We have the brittle material, we apply the force from here and it reaches here. There is no plastic deformation and it all of a sudden it breaks here. So, that is why it is known as brittle because it does not have any ductility. Now, ductility is what after this point what is happening, right? But in brittle material, that point is not there at all. So, means this is for the ductile brittle material, we do not have any ductility and this whatever is happening after the, uh, the proportional limit is associated with ductility. So, I hope you understood the concept of ductility and how we can calculate ductility as percent elongation and percent reduction. So, that is it. We will see you in the next video.